Greetings and welcome to In-Depth. I'm DK Roster. Now, they say that fools rushing where angels fear to tread. And there's no angels, so I don't know what that makes me. But you may be able to see from the branding around, if not now, well, definitely in a little bit. We are at Hit Fit Gym in St. James, where we're going to be speaking with the honey badger himself, Joash Walkins. Walkins, how you do, sir? I'm fine, sir. Well, they say that um, martial traditions and stuff, many times they can teach humility. I don't know if it's because we're doing a session after, but I'm very happy to be here. And Welcome. Tell me a little bit, even before you as an athlete, you as a coach, speak a little bit about hip fitness. Um, well, it all started with the love and passion for martial arts and by extension, fitness. But martial arts first to me, and um, I started martial arts at the tender age of, of 10 years old. I'm 33 now, so you could, you, could, you could do the math and stuff like that. So it all started at that age, and my goal was to always be the best in the world. That was always my goal. And um, I've been an athlete since then, and now God has placed me on this earth to empower others through martial arts and fitness. And um, with my colleague, Dwayne Hines, he's in Canada. We both came together and we made HitFit. HitFit stands for High Intensity Interval Training, um, Fight Integrated Technique Training. So that is what the acronym stands for. And our goal is just to empower the population through fitness and martial arts. But even before you talk about the entire population, I want to get to your family or those around you, please. Because at 10 years old, is it that you're already seeing martial arts or just saying, okay, well, whatever I do, I want to be good at it? Um, well, from a, a tender age, I look at a lot of boxing with my grandfather. And I always had a burning desire to be the world champion in boxing. I grew up looking at guys like Felix Trinidad, Tyson, um, Lennox Lewis, Bernhard Hopkins, all those boxing greats, and I wanted to emulate them by being great also. Um, but lo and behold, it was a bit, um, it, ha it didn't have much boxing back in, in those days, and I'm from Arima, worse yet. I think boxing was probably more in Port of Spain and South and stuff like that, but um, I started with, with, with judo, which is, a, well, you know Chris George, you told me the story about Chris George, so, we, we know a little bit about judo through the other episodes. And I started with judo, and eventually I stumbled upon boxing, and I found my passion at once. I knew this is what I wanted to do as a child, and I just go at it. So how did you find judo? Is it that that was in the area, or? Um, it's quite funny. I think it was all in God's plan, um, because my uncle, Uncle Kelly, he He's a prison officer. And his colleague teaches judo. And it actually started at the base of my abode. Um, the judo club started off with, with, with a lot of people. And I found the interest in going. And um, it had times, you know, many are called, but few are chosen. It had times, I was the only student that showed up for judo on a daily basis. So, so it normally be my sensei and myself. And um, I just keep persistent. I kept at it. I, I wanted to go to the Olympics, and yeah, I keep going. Now, to me, from what I see on the outside looking in, judo is something that kind of teaches having a, a rooted base or being more stable than the person you're trying to, that you're, you're competing against. Do you see that filtering into your outlook on life on a daily basis? Well, definitely. I think most of my foundation actually came from judo. The, the guy who introduced me to judo, he's sort of like a father figure in my life. That's Mr. Wed Eastman. He's the most humble guy that you'll ever see. I used to give trouble as a kid. And this guy used to be like, all right, have a seat on his side and just look on. He will punish me by taking it away, probably for a few minutes and stuff like that. And, and judo being the sport which is the art of gentleness. 
and is the sport that you try to get people off their feet. I learn to maintain that balance by one, the discipline, attending training, where I saw my progress in levels, and two, not being able to literally or physically sweep me off my feet where I maintain that physical balance. So, and I have seen it transcend in, in my life from, from then to now and keep pressing. No, that smile that you have that feel as though it's present all the time. You just call the name there, I'm not even going to call the name. He was smiling too. And I was and I was singing nearer my God to thee. <laughs> but with that smile and with this demeanor that you have, how does the name Honey Badger come into the equation? Um well this demeanor I, I think is is God given. I don't think I think this was given to me, that peace and that love and that joy. This is just who I am. But um, with martial arts, because I'm so passionate about martial arts, is, is the air that I breathe, is, is the roads or the streets that I, I walk. Um, and that was God given to me also, that athleticism for martial arts. Um, when I'm in there, I'm, I'm relentless. I'm not the smiling person that you will see. I'm coming to take your head off when I'm inside there. I'm a competitor first. I am going to compete and I'm going to achieve my goal at whatever means it takes. If I have to climb the highest mountain or swim the deepest sea, I am going to that depth. And um, I was able to manifest what the, the real true meaning of a honey badger is. The honey badger is a small animal, not too larger than your house cat. But the honey badger is relentless in its pursuit towards whatever it, it wants. And, and I see the manifestation of the honey badger within me. I'm relentless for greatness. When I go in there, I don't, you have to kill me to get me out of there. And, and in my mixed martial arts fight, I am 15 wins, one loss. And the only time I lost, the guy had to knock me out to get me out of there. So. If you do some research on the honey badger, I don't want to go too deep into it. I manifest that and my training, my um, trainer, he actually saw the manifestation of the honey badger within me. And one day he just called me the honey badger and that name stuck with me and I love it. You say that and I get in chills because I also, I've seen some stuff and a honey badger will be walking and you see animals, uh, all right boss, they're taking the, they take the back road because the honey badger walking big and broad. But in terms of like relentless in that pursuit of greatness, some people who are relentless in that pursuit of greatness, they find themselves walking lonely roads. But at the back of the jersey that you're wearing, you have coach. Does one take away from the other? Is it that you think about it differently? Describe that to me. Um. Well, to me, I think it's a symbiotic relationship. I think they, they both work hand in hand. Because I'm an athlete. Now, I'm 33 years of age. And I know the athlete road is, is not a very long road. So therefore, I know someday I do have to hang up the gloves. I'm not going to compete with those young bucks forever until they knock me out and I can't find my way and I... I tarnish my entire legacy, so I give my time. I give myself a timestamp. I'm gonna compete up to X, and when that time comes, there are a lot of young youths that are that are passionate about learning martial arts and stuff like that. Yes, it is a lonely road, but at the same time, it being a lonely road is a is a sport that you you have to go in there by yourself. But you are always surrounded by like great coaches like Rich. My, team, my teammates, they are always around me on a daily basis to push me to, to, to that next level. Even though they might be at a lower level, you can learn from anyone. Once you keep your cup open and you, let, you just let it overflow, you're going to get something from it. And to me, the coaching aspect, I didn't understand. A lot of people told me, bro, well, the level that you at and Dwayne is not here anymore. You'll need to coach and find a team and stuff. And since I started coaching, I started understanding this sport a lot more because I was just, before I was just 
ruling on instincts. So you ask me X, I will have to figure out exactly what, what do I do for this technique or what I do in this position. But be, be, because now I have to relate to so many people and I do it on a daily basis, now I am starting to figure out the, 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 the equation to each position and I have to explain it so much to, to different people and some people learn faster than others. It's just helped build my game and I'm more sure of myself being a mixed martial artist now than I was five years ago. When you talk about cup overflowing, well, the cup overflow in terms of time on this half of the conversation, so we will come back after this. We are speaking with Joe Ashley, Honey Badger, Walkins. Stay with us. We'll return with more. at the Hit Fit Gym. We're speaking with the Honey Badger, Joash Walkins. And yes, you, you, you've spoken about the record 15 to 1. You've spoken about MMA. But where do you compete? Is it all local? Is it outside? And what, how did you move from judo to boxing to MMA? So I've done multiple disciplines and having done multiple disciplines I've had the, the opportunity to represent Trinidad and Tobago in various martial arts so I don't know if you heard about Sambo which is a Russian art um, it's self defense without weapon that is what Sambo means and I had the opportunity to, to visit a lot of countries through Sambo and Mr. Jason Fraser and stuff like that and um, yeah, I've been to like Russia, Japan, Africa, um, Belarus. I've trained in like Brazil, Holland, you name it. I've been all. I've been blessed to travel the world to represent my country at the highest level in martial arts. So I've seen it. I wouldn't say I've seen it all, but I've seen a lot and I have a vast amount of experience and knowledge. But with my mixed martial arts career. It was mostly Caribbean. I competed in the Caribbean. But the, the guys that I competed against were guys from Brazil, Canada, USA, the Caribbean, etc. So it was, it was all international guys. So that is where I get my experience. I fought Russians and all these things. So I, I know what it feel like at a high level and I could, I, I am a high level athlete also. Do you ever find looking and saying that, okay, well, you're interdisciplinary. You have these different styles and traditions that you follow. Is it ever a thing where you see something coming and your body wants to react in a way that possibly outside of the rules or the competition that you're in at that point in time, like it might be just stand up and you want to clinch and go to the ground or something like that? Do you ever, you ever have that experience? Um... I'm well trained in different arts and because being well trained in different arts, um, abiding to the rules to me is, is no problem because if we throw on boxing gloves and we say, all right, we're only boxing, I wouldn't feel the urge to kick you because I've trained boxing alone and then on the other hand, I've trained kickboxing. So I'm, I'm able to separate the, the urge, <laughs> the urge to to, to throw illegal blows or illegal moves, not saying it, it may not happen, but if it do happen by any means, it will be definitely unintended. And you mentioned the name Jason Fraser. Uh, there's something supposed to be happening in Trinidad and Tobago. Is, is Pan American? Yes, so we have the IMMAF Pan American um, MMA Championship. So that is all the amateurs from the Pan American region. They are going to come together, compete to see who is the best of the best in their respected divisions. And I'm glad to say that we, we actually have a Pan American bronze medalist in the camp, Joshua James. Um, he won the bronze at, in Colombia last year. Um, he went to the world championship, unfortunately things didn't go his way, but as we said, Experience and experience to me is one of the greatest teachers. And no, 
no amount of money or no other experience in this world could give you that experience of competing at a high level. So we're looking forward to some goals. We have some other guys here open to make the team and yeah, we're gonna show sure make Trinidad and Tobago proud. And what does it mean to, you spoke about experience. What kind of opportunities are there for the individuals competing as well as just, I guess the growth of this type of discipline, this type of sport, this type of experience in Trinidad and Tobago, having the games here? Well, to be honest, now is the best time to be in combat sport in Trinidad and Tobago because there are a lot of organizations throwing a lot of events. So therefore, as an athlete, you know your motivation, especially on the people on the competitive side, your motivation is to go out there and compete. When you're motivated to compete, you definitely have to be motivated to put in the work in order to compete. That, so that's where you will see a lot of growth taking place. And because there are a lot of competition like Rabs, Rooftop, Rumble, Rough and Tough, Cuff, all these, all these competitions, there are a lot of opportunities for the younger guys. And, and now they have the ability to go and put everything that they say they could do. They have the ability to showcase it on the line. Although mixed martial arts is in its infantile stage in Trinidad, due to like UFC, Bell Bellator, PFL, all those major organizations and all the major streams and pay-per-views and the superstars in the game. Just like how there's Lionel Messi, now we are in our infantile stage, but when you come to mixed martial arts, everybody want to be a Conor McGregor now. Everybody want to emulate that. And the more stars that we have in the game produced from those organizations, then it will have local stars on the scene like me that athletes will look up to, they will watch my video and they will want to be like me. I was, I was definitely surprised the last guy I fought in, in Dominican Republic, he was like, you know, I actually look up to this guy. Um, when I was coming up in the ranks, I, I look up highly to this guy and I was baffled by that, that a guy from another country actually look up to me. So by having all these events, we're going to grow stars. And with having stars, if, 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 you, if you think about it, uh, uh, ants will draw to, or, or flies will draw to the light. We're not saying humans as flies, but anytime there's a, a, a beacon of light, the human element is to draw to that. And, and the more stars that we create in the sport, we're going to have more people drawing to it. You, you're seeing more kids doing martial arts. Well, karate has always been along, but I'm talking about the mixed martial art aspect. It's still small, but I am projecting in the next 10 years, and I'm prophesying this, in the next 10 years, it's going to be the biggest sport ever. Like, worldwide, UFC is going to take it to our next level, and due to that marketing, that marketing will be similar to how every karate movie was. When you were small, oh, when you look at a karate movie, what you will go and do? Karate. You will go and, you want to go and kick up your, your brothers and sisters and your, your, your cousins and them, and... And it's the same effect that mixed martial arts is going to have. Mixed martial arts is going to be shown in every movie. You could already see it. There's a cage in every movie. There's people fighting and doing arm bars and throws. And, and you see in the, the mixture of martial arts. As a long time when it's just a kick up. Now you're seeing that everything is integrated. So in the next 10 years, it's going to be the biggest sport ever. And Trinidad will be booming with talent. It'll be booming with, with excitement. We're going to have young prospects coming up. And it's, it's definitely going to be exciting. Well, we are, we're excited to have this conversation with you. We want to thank you so much being able to be in this space. How are we going to try to take a little roll and dumbbell and thing now, too? Yeah. But thank you very much, Joash Walkins, the Honey Badger. And we want to thank you. This has been In Depth with me, DK Rasta. On behalf of all of us at TTT, thank you so much for tuning in.